Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, my feline friends. This is Michelle Fern, your host on Catitude. All right, guess what time of year it is? Yep, spring, but it's also kitty season. We're going to talk about today what is kitty season, what you should be aware of, and what you can do to make it easier for all of the thousands and probably millions of kittens being born this season. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, it's me again, Michelle Fern, host of Catitude. You know what I love? My cats. I love how Dennis comes and taps me whenever he wants a treat. You know what I don't love? Cleaning up Dennis's litter box, which is why Arm & Hammer created new cloud control litter. There's no cloud of nasties when I scoop. It is 100% dust-free, free of heavy perfumes, and helps reduce airborne dander from scooping. So, what happens in the litter box stays in the litter box. New Cloud Control Cat Litter by Arm & Hammer. More power to you. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com Welcome back, everyone. It is kitty season. Now, what is kitty season? This is the time of year an unaltered female cat, which is called a queen, goes into heat. Now, this time in at least the northern hemisphere is about April through October. It can vary a little, sometimes as early as March. And it's generally, you know, in the warmer months. So my guess is in in other hemispheres, it would probably be opposite. But in the Northern Hemisphere, it's from April through October. And there's a lot of reasons you should be aware of it. And there's a lot of things you can do as, you know, a pet parent or as a caring pet advocate person to do your part to help the kittens that are being born out there in the wild and to protect your cats and protect the TNR cats in your neighborhood. So here's some facts that I found while doing my research that I thought were pretty interesting. Cats can go into heat, female cats, of course, female cats can go into heat as early as four months old. As soon as the cats are able to go into heat, they're called a queen. That's only for cats, you know, female cats, of course, that are not fixed. Just so you know, cats can be fixed pretty early in age, just as they give birth pretty early in age. They can give birth as soon as four months old, which, I mean, that's pretty short. But they can be fixed as early as eight weeks old or two pounds, which is definitely fixed the sooner the better. There's been discussions between different veterinarians, different schools of thought, whether cats should be able to go through their first heat or not. I'm on the side with fix them as soon as you can, because if you're not able to control your, you know, your cat during the heat season, you may end up with a litter of kitties you weren't expecting. Now, cats can also give birth to multiple litters at once. And what happens is when the cat is impregnated by different males within a seven-day period, they're likely to have actually multiple litters within the same litter. And this happened to Sammy, the cat that gave birth, my uh, pregnant TNR cat that I didn't know was pregnant. More about her a little bit later. Also, another great interesting fact is that when female cats are in heat, they will do whatever they can do to find a tomcat. And a tomcat is an unaltered male cat. I think it has to do with the pheromones and hormones produced in their body to just find a guy and have it done, you know, (laughs) for lack of better words. And there's also, I believe, the pheromones that are produced in the female uh, queen cats, the pheromones that are luring the tomcat to her as well. So kind of going both ways. Also, 
cats can go into heat up to five times within a cycle. Now, when cats going into the heat cycle, that's like never ending. Some cats can give birth and get pregnant within just six to eight weeks. So while they're actually nursing and recuperating with their babies, maybe just six weeks later, before the babies are even fully weaned from them, they can get pregnant again. And yes, that also happened to my cat, Sammy. And I'll tell you the story a little bit later. Now, here's some tips on how to tell if a cat is pregnant. There's a few different stages, actually five stages. There's one, fertilization. And you know what? Cats, just like females, female humans, do get morning sickness. And it's generally the first two to three weeks. So during this time, she'll have, you know, what it seems like morning sickness. She won't be eating too much. And by the middle stage, which is the third stage, she starts to be gaining weight. By the fourth stage, you can tell that she's pre-labor because her nipples become visible and she'll stop eating about two days before she gives birth. Now for labor and delivery, she'll find a secure place. She'll lick her babies and, okay, this is a little gross to us, but she eats the placenta because this gives her nutritional benefits. You know, cats in the wild are very about survival. So this is just something that's normal to the female cat. Little gross, but hey. Now, what do you do once the kitties are born? Okay, here comes the fun part, but it's a challenge. You know, the kitties are born, they're adorable, they're cute, but you have to be responsible for them with her in a sense. And there's things that you will have to watch out for and they become mobile very quickly. But first thing you should do, don't disturb the kittens unless necessary for a little while. Know that if the mom seems to have abandoned the kitten, she might just be on the hunt for food and will return. Even if it's a cat mom that you're feeding, she still may go on the hunt to look for food. This is something that's in her nature to do. So don't become too worried. You only need to go into action if you see that the kitties are in harm's way. And this is something interesting that happened to us. When Sammy gave birth, she had the kitties on the side, next to the side of my house by where there's some, you know, brush. So she felt protected. Well, during a heavy rainstorm, she didn't know, but she was near a water spout and the kittens almost drowned. So if I hadn't moved them to a more secure place, there would be no kittens. And, you know, she's a cat. She wasn't aware of this. Um, of course, the next day we got some, some uh, hosing to move the water away. Way. So if she still went to that spot, she would still be fine. And so with the kittens, of course. But just try to keep an eye out for where the kittens are. Don't disturb them and just make sure they're secure. Kittens can be weaned as soon as four to six weeks old, and they should be handled from five weeks old to socialize them. This isn't something else that's really important. Kittens, they grow so fast. By, I would say, two to three weeks, they're already walking all over the place. And if the mom cat gave birth, you know, someplace near your home by some brush or bushes or just some secure area where she feels a little hidden, you want to keep an eye out for the kittens and see how far they're going because it's very easy for them to go under a car during any time of wet weather or very warm weather, that's where they go, under the car to keep them dry to keep them, you know, away from the sun. So really it's time to, when they're about two weeks old and if she's going to keep them in your area, try to find a spot if possible where the kittens can be somehow contained. I was lucky enough to have a little dog run. So I made a little house for the kittens in there. You know, they had a tarp. So they had, I made it, you know, put a tarp. Up. Actually, the husband made a tarp. So he, he gets the credit. We put a tarp up so that they would be protected from the sun and the rain. She was able to feed them in there. She was able to climb out and do whatever, but the kittens weren't, at least for a while. And it was a grassy area. There was um, a couple of plants we bought for, they say, would have little bushes around them for jumping on, some toys and things like that. And they were fine. This way it kept them somewhat protected from, you know, it definitely kept them protected from the driveway or going under near cars. 
and it also kept them somewhat protected from wildlife, such as raccoons and ducks and possums and so forth. At least that's what I find in my area, my neck of the woods. You might find deer or something else that you need to protect them from. All right, we're going to be right back right after this break. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all-natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up, rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. This is Michelle Fern, your host on Catitude, and we're talking about kitty season and what you can do to get through it when you find TNR cats, community cats in your neighborhood that you want to assist, or just to keep your cats safe, and especially if you have indoor-outdoor cats. So we've been talking about, you know, what to do when the kitties are little and the mom has just given birth and the kitties are a couple weeks old, here's another thing to be careful of. Watch out for kitties hiding inside your car. Yes, I said that right. Inside your car. Where I live, it's an area that gets torrential rains and hurricanes and and horrible weather. And I found this also true for people that live in areas where there's a lot of hail. So during the time we were prepping for a somewhat mild hurricane, we couldn't find Sammy and or what she did with her kittens. And so we were looking around, looking around, and we finally noticed that she hid them up inside my husband's SUV, inside the car. I don't even want to think about what could have happened If the car had been turned on, that's, oh, I can't even go there. But one thing that I've read um, in many places on the internet, and I've also heard from other show hosts on Pet Life Radio, this is a good tip. Before you start your car, bang on the hood. Just give a little bang. This will startle any cat that happens to be climbing up inside your car and will get them to jump out. So that was something, I mean, I don't know how this mama cat, Sammy, the mama cat, managed to bring all of her babies one by one up inside and she found an area, she's a skinny little thing, to curve her body and have the cat still fit and wean from her. But the other thing that happened is the cat babies also fell out. You know, they they just like plopped out. They were so little. Maybe at this time they were a week and a half old. So we put some cushioning that was covered. So from the even with the elements, it would still be, you know, cushioned for them. So if the babies fell out, at least they wouldn't get hurt. Just be aware that kittens and cats can hide inside and under your car so that you don't have any horrible surprises. You know, during the lifetime of a cat, she can have up to 50 litters of kittens. And most litters are anywhere from three to five kitties. And considering they can go into heat maybe up to five times during their cycle, that is a lot of kitties. And multiply this times all of the millions of cats out there, queen cats out there that are not, you know, their their queen cats are not fixed. That's a lot of kitties. And what happens to most of them is they are killed, euthanized or run over or taken as prey by other wild animals. The best way to put a stop to this is to get your cats spayed or neutered. That's, you know, the best thing you could do. I can't think of anything better. Fix your cat, but... One thing better, one thing that I am really a huge, huge advocate is, is adopt, don't shop. There are so many kitties out there that need to be adopted in shelters, especially during kitty season. This is a great time if you ever wanted to volunteer at a cat shelter. 
or if you want to adopt, because there's an overwhelming amount of kitties that are available at places, you know, like your local humane society or local, you know, cat shelter. There's a lot of um, vets that do TNR, so you might want to inquire there. Or just, you know, even there's neighborhood sites. One that I know of is called Next Door. That was actually where I did the responsible thing in getting the kitties adopted. So and we're talking about that in just a second. So there's a lot of ways you can reach out within your community to let people know you have kitties, they're safe, they're okay. If you're able to take them to the vet for their first look, a lot of vets don't charge for the first visit. Then you can let the people that are adopting the kitties know that they're healthy and, you know, fine and ready to adopt. So there's a lot of things you can do just to be, I guess, a really good pet person, pet pet parent, pet advocate. And think about maybe adopting yourself, you know? I mean, this is how my kitty family grew by by four. <laughs> I had one and now there's five. So this is what happened. So now I was talking earlier about Sammy and I mentioned little bits of her, but I want to share the, a little bit of the story. Some some people might have heard it in an earlier episode, but you know, it deals with kitty season. When I moved into my now home, it was around kitty season. It was right around April. And there was, um, you know, a little, I thought it was a little kitty, but, and she might have been, I don't know how old Sammy was. And I, we started feeding her. And then we thought, wow, you know, she's, she's getting kind of chubby. She must be doing okay, you know? And lo and behold, maybe a couple months later, she gave birth right in front of my doorstep, right there. And she must have been impregnated by two tomcats because, and remember earlier I mentioned that the queens can be impregnated and have multiple litters in one birth. Well, two of her kitties look just like her and just like who I think is the father. And the other kitty was black and white. That's Miss Molly, if you've seen her on Instagram, it's, which is at Catitude17. She's a little black and white diva with the most gorgeous, like, green alien eyes, as I call them. Anyway, so she gave birth. And it was a awakening for me because I had never been around kittens that small. So these kittens are growing and they're mobile. They're walking all over the place by about three weeks, maybe a little less. And that's when I decided we either have to put them in some place, which we luckily had a dog run. And some people said, you know, why didn't you take them in your home? Uh, why didn't you bring them in your patio? We do have a covered and screened patio. And the reason is because of Mama. Sammy wouldn't have liked it. She's very much a wild cat. She's, I don't want to say wild. She's a feral cat. She's a community cat. She's come a long way and she's become much more socialized towards us. But she's still an outdoor cat. So if I had tried to bring the kittens inside the patio, they would be separate from the mom and Sammy would have done whatever she could to get to the cats. So we couldn't put her inside a contained place. The only time we did this kind of, and ah, it feels a little mean, but we kind of trapped her and put her in a very large um, cat carrier is during a hurricane that was going to be very, very pretty bad. And there was nothing else we could do. But we did put her with the kitties and put food and water. And she had plenty of room and she wasn't in there very long. It was just during the part of the storm that was, you know, horrible. And probably a couple of hours. It wasn't very long. But we, you know, built a little community for them under a tarp. Well, they had an, a tarp area, big grassy area, plants, toys, the whole bit. And they did well. And so I was wondering, you know, when can I get her fixed? Well, <laughs> I tried to catch her myself and that didn't work so well. And so by the time I did try to get her fixed, guess what? She was pregnant again. Yep. And that was only a period of maybe, oh, geez, maybe like four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, maybe six weeks later, she was already pregnant. And people told me, you know, you can't really take her to, in to get fixed until the babies are old enough. So you have to wait six weeks, eight weeks. And 
Then she gave birth again to another three cats, all tabbies like herself. Oh, and by the way, we did adopt the black and white one from um, that, you know, Miss Molly. So we adopted one and we adopted the kitten that she had when that was with her, Charlotte. So we adopted two from her litter. Plus we have Dennis inside. So that's three indoor kitties anymore. And I, I don't know if I would be able to breathe because I just about manage my allergies with the three of them. So she had the second litter and we took care of them the same way. And when they were very, very little, we did get them, you know, some kitten formula. And as they got older, you know, special food for kittens and so on. We did this with the first litter as well. And I began seeking out a way to get her fixed earlier than I did before because I didn't want her to go through another litter. I made sure that all of the kittens were adopted the first litter. And, you know, of course we adopted one. And then for the second litter, I did the same thing. I reached out on um, nextdoor.com to my local neighborhood and adopted some kittens that way, reached out to friends, let them know. I also made sure, and this is common during kitting season, make sure that whoever adopts your kitties wants a kitty that will turn into a cat and no longer be an adorable little kitten. They're still adorable cats, but don't just let anybody adopt them. You know, I recently did a wonderful interview with Crumbs and Whiskers, and they go through a little screening process, which is wonderful, because a lot of times people will impulsively say, oh, I want that kitty, so cute, and not realize all the care that goes into caring for a kitten, a cat, a dog, a puppy, or, you know, a gerbil or rabbit, whatever. But make sure that they're willing to deal with everything that's involved and the cost, the vet visits and so forth. So what I had to do, and this is also an interview that I had because I've never heard of it and I thought it was interesting. This is an earlier interview. I hired a cat trapper and the cat trapper was able to catch Sammy and Sammy was fixed. I got her baby daddy fixed. So Sammy was fixed. And just to summarize where everybody is now, her baby daddy was fixed. That's Jethro. So Sammy and Jethro are like our outdoor cats. You know, they prefer it that way. And they have a house outside where they can go into. They have a special heating unit in there that's specially for cats and very safe that we use during when it's a little bit cooler, which where I live is about 50 degrees. <laughs> I know, not that cold, but for the kitties, it's fine. They can go into there when it's raining. They get fed. They get flea treatment. And of course, they're both fixed. So no more unwanted kitties being born, trying to find a home. And they seem to be much happier as well, you know, and they're just the cutest little pair. They're on my Instagram. At times, I have pictures of Sammy and Jethro, but they're a happy cat family. Molly is now, wow, she's about almost two and a half. Wow, does time fly? And she's doing great. And Charlotte is her bigger sister. There's a little sibling rivalry there, but Charlotte is doing very well also. And that's kind of what's going on. So I'm just so glad to be able to share this with you and to let you know all about kitty season. Also, keep in mind that there's a lot of pop-up kitty cafes and kitty adoption centers that will occur during this time period from April to October then compared to any other time. So be sure to reach out, volunteer. If you can't adopt, you can bring, you know, old blankets or towels to your local shelter. They could always use things like this. And now you know a little more about kitty season. Thanks for listening. Thanks to my kitties that taught me about the kitty season, which um, Charlotte and Molly and Jethro and Sammy, they're all part of one family. Dennis, he's another story. He, I opened the door and he came in, so that's how I found Dennis. But now you know more about kitty season. So keep listening to Catitude. We have a lot of great shows coming up. Special thanks to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me sound great. And thanks to all the furry felines out there for listening. If you want to see pictures of my crazy crew, just go to um, the Instagram handle at Catitude17 and you'll find plenty of pictures. Thanks and keep listening to more of my tales and findings and great interesting things that are all about cats on Catitude. Catitude.
Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.